Hello, I would like to do a related rates problem with you. We're going to do a pretty straightforward one, um, but my intention with it is for this to be an introductory video um, where we actually solve a problem using the um, methods typical for related rates problems. Um, so you could go on and try other um, possibly more tricky problems later. Um, so these problems, these related rate problems, are basically always going to be given in terms of word problems. Um, and our mission is to be able to parse out what's it asking and then get a handle on and how do I and how do I figure out how to answer what they're um, what they're asking with practice um, these problems can become fairly natural um, without practice they will continue to be an obstacle probably um, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and read it um, even though I'm sure you can read it too I don't know maybe my handwriting's terrible and you can't so it says, it says water pours into a rectangular fish tank at a rate of 0.3 meters cubed per minute, cubic meters per minute. And then, so that's a statement. How fast, here's the question, how fast is the water level rising if the base is a two by three rectangle? We're given um, no variable names, we're given no picture, um, and we've got to figure out um, how to identify the quantity that they're trying to um, get us to compute and then compute the thing. Um, so this is an exercise in um, this is an exercise in creativity and assertion, in a, in, in a very real sense. Um, so um, we've got to figure out how this rate here, because here's a rate, something per minute, to another to another rate. So here's how fast, right? How fast? What's the rate? Right? What's the rate at which the water level is changing? So I've got a rate at which um, water is pouring in. Right? And if you add water to a fish tank, rest assured that that water level is going to rise. So the water level is related to the volume rate. The rates are related. This is a related rates problem. And that's going to be the strong theme in all of these problems is there's going to be some probably geometric constraint. If you're lucky, you get a picture, but don't count on it. Um, and there's um, there are two rates in relationship to the problem that are related somehow. So I'm going to take you through. Um, I'm going to take you through this one, um, and then I would like for you to try a problem um, from the book um, as a next step. Um, so um, water pours into a rectangular fish tank at a rate of 0.3 meters cubed per minute. Okay, so I'm seeing just jump, just jumping out right now at me right now. Meters cubed. Meters cubed is a statement about. Let's see here. Is it is it a length? Is it an area? Is it a volume? Is it a hypervolume? What's meters cubed? What does it measure? It measures volume, right? It measures volume. So this is a rate of change of volume. So this looks like volume per minute. So um, it's like um, yeah, volume per time. So this quantity right here. Um, could very well measure dv dt, the amount of um, rate of change of the volume with respect to time. So dv dt, um, that's the rate of change of volume. And, and I was given that, which is really nice. And then the water level is rising. The water level is rising. Let's see, the water level. We should come up with a name to represent the water level. Um, it's like a height. So how about we call the water level, how about we call the water level H? So H is the height. H is the height of the water. Um, and now we want to know how fast that's changing. So a rate of change is a derivative. So we want to know dH dt That's the rate of change of the water level. And this thing is what we want to know. I want to know dH dt. I'm given dV dt. Now, how is um, V related to H? Let's draw a picture.
There's my rectangular fish tank. This thing's from the back. Here's my rectangular fish tank. Right. It's got a width, a length, and a height. Let's go ahead and label them. H, W, L. It might be that you don't get the notation all correct and you have to like put things together. Like initially we had made it, might have called this like L for like level and then accidentally had like two L's and then we'd have to figure out that I had two L's. That can happen. Um, that's totally reasonable. Um, so these three things right here go together um, to, make, um, to make the volume, right? So the volume is equal to the volume is equal to width times length times height. Now we've got to think. Is the width changing? Is the length changing? Is the height changing? We have to answer that question. I can't answer that question for you. You have to answer that question. So go back to this problem statement right here. I'm seeing this two by three. That's the statement about the base right here. So two by three. So the volume is equal to six times the height. Check it out. Now I've got V, which is a function of time. I've got H, which is a function of time. They're linearly related. They're linearly related to each other, right? So, so, so the, the expression is really simple. I've just got plain old v's, and I've just got plain old h's. I don't have any like squares or square roots or anything like that. In general, that will not be the case. Um, so, in general, you're going to have to use implicit differentiation to do like chain rule and chain out um, the derivatives. That's why this is a first example. Um, it should not be taken as like a golden reference for how to do these types of problems. Although I don't believe that such a thing exists, um, because as soon as you think you've seen them all, um, I think that you haven't seen them all. So let's take the derivative of this expression right here with respect to time. Okay? So we're going to take the derivative of this with respect to time. I want to take d dt of that expression right there. I'm going to do it to both sides. And now here's the tricky part, or maybe not the tricky part, but like the thing to realize conceptually, which is that um, I'm going to get these placeholder expressions, right? I'm going to get these placeholder expressions. I'm going to get um, on the on the left hand side of this thing, I'm going to get d v d t. On the right hand side, I'm going to get six d h d t which might feel a little weird because I don't have functions for these things, but it has to be true, right? If these two quantities are equal, then their rates of change have to be equal to each other. So pattern is going to be do some setup. You're going to get some equation. You're going to take the derivative. You're going to get this expression right here. And now we're going to go back to our original problem statement and we're going to go, what do I know? What do I not know? And what thing do I want to know? I want to know dh dt, right? I want to know this expression right here. And if you've done this correctly, the problems are always set up so that um, you know everything except for the thing that you're interested in. We happen to know dv dt. We were given it. It's the rate of change of volume. Do you see the rate of change of volume? It's that 0 0.3 meters cubed per minute. We can do a little bit of dimensional analysis, right? It's volume per time. It's volume per time. Volume per time. So this expression right here is 0 0.3. Do, do, do. 0 0.3. And now I just, right, so I'm going to plug in everything that I know, leaving hopefully only the one thing that I don't know, and then I'm going to solve for it. So now I'm going to divide by 6, and I'm 
look, I've got DHDT by itself, which is the thing that we identified early on in this process um, that we wanted to find when we were all said and done with this problem. So let's go ahead and simplify this expression um, one more time. If you take um, 0 0.3 and divide it by 6, you end up getting um, 0 0.05. And the um, unit on this thing should be um, height per time. So it's going to be meters per second, which is pretty slow. Um, but that seems pretty reason uh, not meters per second. That's going to be meters per minute. I apologize. Meters per minute. There we go. Um, so in 20 minutes, it's going to rise a meter. You probably shouldn't leave the water on that long. I don't know. I mean, that's a big fish tank. I mean, already we can estimate that the thing is probably like six cubic meters in size, and that's a lot of water. So um, that's kind of the basic pattern for related rates problems. Let me talk through it one more time, what we did. We, we were given um, this word problem, and you're always going to be given a word problem, and if you're lucky, you're given a diagram. So you're given these words. And we've got to parse out and identify the quantities that are in play right here. Probably should my, my list should include V at some point. Um, I, th I think it's incomplete that it doesn't have a V in it. Right? If, you, if you end up getting a rate of change like this, probably you also are going to need to write down like the actual thing before its rate of change. Um, so this stuff right here is going to be parsed out of this right here, and we're just going to make up symbols for the thing. Right? We weren't given any variable names. We weren't given any function names. It's entirely words. So any names of things, any variable declarations, those are your choice. Right? And it's up to you to figure out whether they're um, changing with respect to time or not. Right? I know that the volume is changing with respect to time because I'm pouring water in. I know that the height is changing with respect to time because I'm pouring water in and the fish tank isn't changing its width or length um, with time, so they're fixed. So when I take the derivative of this expression right here, w and l are constant. Right? And I can take their concrete values and put them in and just get 6. So I'm going to take the derivatives, um, and then I'm going to substitute, 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 solve, and then I'm going to get a concrete number, um, and then we're going to try to relate it back to this thing. Like, say we got like 30 out of this thing right here, but this thing's only filling up at 0.3 meters cubed per minute. Um, it's, right, that's way off. So I'd kind of do some like, or I'm, uh, like or, like magnitude, um, like order magnitude type estimations to make sure your um, quantities feel like they're about the right size, um, which um, we'll get better at over time. Um, so that's related rates, kind of in a nutshell. Um, without me writing down um, a description of it, I just talked through it. Um, but um, hopefully, it all makes sense as you work through and do more problems. Um, and I want to say thank you for watching, and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.